Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to be flipping through my 2021 bullet journal and showing you guys all of the spreads and stuff and thoughts and other things <laughs> that went on in this notebook. I have a silent version of this video for those of you who don't want to hear me talking and just want some relaxing music and the journal flip through. So I'll make sure to link that below and in a card so you can go watch that if it's more your speed. But for this video, I'm going to be flipping through my pages and talking a bunch about kind of this journal, what went on in this journal, and the kind of big things I learned while using this journal. So before I get into the flip through, I wanted to quickly mention the journal I used this year. This is a bullet journal edition to notebook, and this is a collaboration between bullet journal and Leuchtturm 1917. It's this beautiful blush pink color that I was actually really impressed with how well it held up over the six months. I use this from July of 2021 to December and it really doesn't show anywhere from what I can see. There's no dirt or smudges, which I find especially impressive considering how light of a color this is. And I really, really enjoyed using it this past couple months. So I highly recommend checking this notebook out if you are looking for one. I thought it was a absolutely fantastic bullet journal. And I used this guy from July of 2021 until December of 2021. So those six months are going to be in this journal. So at the beginning of the journal, there's a couple pages specific to this notebook. And if you want to get an overview of all the features, I do have a review video that goes over all that stuff. So I'll link that below because I have a lot of other stuff that I want to talk about today. So we're staying focused. <laughs> but for this journal, after the couple of pre-made pages on kind of the left here, I just jumped right in and set up a couple yearly spreads based on things I wanted to track and just things I knew that I wanted to use before going into my monthly pages. So starting off here, I have my index. Then I have my future log, which I only use for project-based items. I found this year actually that using a Google Calendar worked a lot better for me. And that was kind of one big takeaway or thing I experimented and discovered with this journal was using a Google Calendar in conjunction with a bullet journal actually was really, really good for me. And it just worked really well with my brain and it made both the systems even more effective than they already were. I actually really loved making these two spreads this year and filling them out. These are my movie and TV show trackers. And I set these up kind of on a whim, just for fun. And I figured it would just be fun to write things down if I remembered. But I actually managed to write down quite a few movies I watched and I liked this kind of exercise so much I carried it onto my next journal. So that was a fun discovery as well. So I'm quickly gonna go over this spread on the right because it's probably mostly blurred out. This is my one line a day page where I would write down a line or just a quick sentence about everything or a couple things that were memorable that happened every day. And I kept this up for the entire journal. I think I missed about three days in November, but besides that, I journaled every single day, which is something I'm actually <laughs> very like impressed I did. It was uh, kind of cool to look back and realize I actually did that and committed. I was honestly really <laughs> pleased and proud of myself when I saw that. It was definitely a big self five moment, but yeah, I will be blurring it out just because it is a lot of really personal stuff. And if you see other things in this flip through that are also blurred out, that's just for privacy. But I hope that you guys can still get a good idea of what was kind of going on in my journal. Most of this stuff blurred out is just people's names. So if that kind of helps you get an idea of what would be there, hopefully, that kind of fills in a couple of the blanks. So 
So as you'll see in this journal, kind of a big theme or trend I noticed when looking back at this guy was I experimented a lot with different spreads, like this one actually. This is a weekly review. So I experimented a lot with doing weekly and monthly reviews in this journal, which was something that I hadn't done previously. But I actually found it was really helpful, not only for like my productivity and getting stuff done and kind of resetting, but also I found mentally it was really nice to just take a moment to like reflect on the week or the month and decompress a bit. And also I really, really found it cool as a kind of time capsule activity because I would write down stuff that happened every week or month. So it allowed me to really look back on my daily logs, which was how I would journal every day and get a really good idea of all the stuff that happened. Besides trying different spreads, this one actually, I showed you guys the weekly review. This is what the monthly review looked like. So a little chunkier, a little bigger, but very, very useful. I also experimented a lot with getting creative in my journal. I'm kind of a more simple or minimalist journaler if you wanna put a label on it. Uh, but this year I kind of use this journal as a place to kind of try to figure out how I could keep my journal simple while still exercising my creativity and keeping things interesting and fun and allowing myself to be creative without sacrificing the functionality. And that's something I always kind of struggled with my journal. Oh, but a uh, quick intermission here. This is actually a travel journal spread. I went to Vancouver in September and I just continued with my daily logs, as you can see, but I kind of gave it its own page just so it was separate in my journal. And this was a really cool way to kind of note down all the stuff that happened. And I really, really liked how I did this. I'm definitely going to do this for any other trips I go on, although that might not be for a while. <laughs> and um, at the end here, I just did a brief reflection on the trip and just kind of wrote my thoughts down on the airplane and I thought that was a cool way to kind of close off this section of my journal. But as I was saying, one of the things that I really tried to figure out with this journal was how I could be creative and keep things interesting and do new stuff in my journal without kind of spending a lot of time journaling that I found draining and also without sacrificing the functionality of my journal. And at first, you'll probably notice I did a lot of collaging, which was really fun, but I found I started getting more focused on the collage and how the collage looked instead of focusing on actually journaling and using my journal. So you'll notice that some of these spreads aren't filled out as much. And I mean, I didn't have too much going on, so it wasn't the end of the world, but it was kind of frustrating because I felt like I was kind of being pulled into two different directions. And maybe some of that has to do with the fact that I post my journal and I want to look interesting for you guys, but I mean, it also has to be something interesting for me. And I do like being creative, but I wasn't really sure how to create that novelty without getting to the point where I would think a lot about how to do things, if that makes sense. Then I kind of digressed into using stickers. Uh, these are from the brand Opal and Fern, who's a local sticker maker. And then we kind of struck gold. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Then I started doing vision boards every month. This was the first month I did it. This is November. So this is what it looks like here. It was really fun to make. It was really easy. And not only did I like how it looked and I liked how it made my journal look a little different every month, but I also really loved how I would be able to put photos in here based on things I wanted to do and my goals and my kind of big projects for the month. And it acted as a really helpful source of motivation and also just a kind of tangible reminder of those things. So this was kind of where I started to 
I mean, your style's kind of always evolving, but I think I've kind of started to figure out what works for me and what is enjoyable for me while still kind of being creative while being functional and using my journal. Besides the vision boards, I actually didn't do any sort of decorating or collaging or anything in the rest of my journal. I kept it really, really simple. And that kind of worked for me. I liked that a lot. So you'll kind of notice, I feel like this happens with a lot of my journals that they get more and more simple as the year goes on. <laughs> but for me, just having my daily logs is the biggest priority, so it kind of worked. And um, this is my December vision board. I really liked how this one turned out. It has like a really fun kind of neutral brown color scheme, which I really liked. And this vision board actually inspired me to change from using black pen and black ink to using brown pen and brown ink in my next bullet journal. Because I thought it'd be fun to switch out my pen color and create something new that way while not really changing up the rest of my system. So we have the last one line a day here. The gingerbread men I thought was really cute and I really liked how it matched my vision board. And something that kind of dropped off during these last couple months was my weekly and monthly reflections. I stopped doing them. And that's something I want to bring back in the new year and do more in January going forward. I also started using sticky notes on like the last week uh, just for like brief notes. And I don't know if this is like breaking the bullet journal rules or anything, but I actually found it was really helpful and I've been using a lot of sticky notes in my journal in the new year. So I don't know, kind of weird, just like a small thing, a sticky note, but it made such a big difference for me. <laughs> so this is the last page in this journal. I have this like very specific tendency to end a journal on the last day of the year and then start my journal on the first day of the year, even though the weeks kind of overlap but for some reason, this is just what makes sense for me. So my journal ended on Friday, December 31st. And then after my daily logs, I made a couple spreads to wrap up the year. And then at the back of my journal, I have my, I call this adventures, but I thought I would use the back of my journal as a spot to include Instax photos from the year, which was both successful and not. I only did two spreads and I think they came out really nice and I love the photos, but I realized that for how many photos I wanted to put in here, it was getting a bit expensive. <laughs> so. I kind of stopped using these and decided to kind of re-strategize for the next year, but it was a cool little experiment. And sometimes when you don't like how something ended up, I like to remind myself of where it then led me and how, you know, sometimes we have to do stuff that doesn't work out in order to get to stuff and kind of figure out how to do something that then works better for us. So. That's kind of the way I like to turn those things around instead of just getting down on myself. <laughs> so I have a couple pages at the back here. And then I just have at the back, I always do this in my journal. This is a pen test page where I just like to write down just pen swatches so that I know how they look in my journal, if they bleed, all that important stuff. And then some really bright orange sticky notes in the back. And that is everything. That is my entire six months of 2021 in this bullet journal. 
So yeah, that was the entire flip through. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how my journal looked throughout the entire year and uh, all the thoughts and things I wrote down. And I guess we're saying goodbye to this guy. I'm always, <laughs> I always get very sentimental and kind of sad when I have to stop using my journals because I've like been with them for so long and it feels like I don't know, it just, I always get really attached to my things, so <laughs> that's just a me thing, but this was a great journal. A lot of cool stuff happened in this journal, and I experimented a lot. I did cursive for the first time exclusively in this journal, and my cursive improved a lot in this journal, which was cool, which you guys probably saw throughout the pages, and now we're on to a new one, onto a new journal, and I really love my new journal, so here's to a new year with new journals. I can't wait to do another year of journaling and obsessing about stationery with you guys. And here's to 2021. And I guess here's to a new year with 2022. All right, guys, I'm gonna head out now and I will catch you next time. Bye.